What's up guys, it's your boy Pete, and welcome back to Planting with Pete. Now, if you're new here, this channel consists of almost everything houseplant related. That tickles your fancy, hit that subscribe button, sit back, and enjoy the video. Alright guys, on today's video, we are talking my growing medium, which is sphagnum moss. A lot of you guys have asked me how am I able to grow <laughs> my plants or my collection at least 97 point three odd number percent of my collection here is grown in sphagnum moss now there is some kind of like this squammy and where is that is that it um a monster of peru they are grown in soil um all of my calatheas i'm not mistaken are grown in soil and then i have some other ones that may have come in a little later that i would prefer them to be in soil instead of me having to try and rustle with them in sphagnum moss now the greatest pack the moss I use is the premium grow, premium grade better grow orchid moss. Now I get this stuff here from Lowe's. It's like five dollars, four ninety nine, um, a bale. So when I normally go, I get maybe about three or four bales, and it will usually last me however long I'm needing to use the sphagnum moss. Now for this the actual regular sphagnum moss, this is with nothing else in it. I use this here on my moss plants, which I do have a video, you guys. You want to go check that out. Um, again, 90 something odd percent of my collection is all moss planks and they are actually growing vertical on the wall. Um, you definitely can see some here in the background as well. When it's time for me to do my dirty sphagnum mixture and I will let you guys see the inside and the pots and things that I do use for my sphagnum moss. It's just like growing a proper getting your plants in sphagnum moss. I do know a lot of you guys, um, I do know a lot of you guys propagate in sphagnum moss, some of you just go straight soil, some go straight um, semi-hydro water. I propagate in water, to be honest with you. Even I can propagate in sphagnum moss, but propagate in sphagnum moss, you definitely have to keep the humidity up compared to like sticking that cutting in water or in some type of watery substrate. Now you can definitely do soil, but soil you have to keep it moist. There's a ratio of water that you have to use in order to keep that plant or that cutting healthy. Um, the leaf still attached and it from rotting and that's only if you have a good enough area root system that can support that but inside of my dirty sphagnum mix that's what I call it dirty spag you guys it's dirty spag simply because it's not regular spag anymore the mixture that I do use now inside of my dirty sphagnum moss is the same exact mixture or maybe a little bit more on the mulch side um, inside of my aeroid mixture that I use on a lot of my plants so that I typically don't overwater them. Now that is another reason why I did go spag the moss, if, if that's how you want to call it. I am a heavy waterer and sometimes a, not an overwaterer, but a heavy waterer. You know, with me and soil, we just don't mix. I do have plants in here, as I said, that in soil, but some of them are either still in the nursery pot, not root bound, but I can water them how I want to water them. And others, um, I just completely switched out the soil for my aeroid mix and maybe added a little bit more guarding soil in it to retain a little bit more moisture so that I don't overwater my plants because I'm definitely good at overwatering plants inside of soil. I don't know, but back to my dirty sphagnum mix. Now, inside of this here mix, you guys, it has changed over the years, but the current ingredients that I do use inside of this here mixture is vermiculite. I use perlite, I use mulch, and this is regular garden mulch. You get it from um, like Lowe's Home Depot. It's like $2, $3 for a big sack bag stuff, depending on whatever color you want to use. Now, I don't know if that color is going to mess with the plant, so just to be on the safe side, just get the regular mulch. And I think that is it. Yeah, vermiculite, perlite, mulch. Oh, I do use garden soil, and I also use potting soil as well. Um, help to retain and a little bit more additives as well. Now over time, of course, this is back the moss breaks down, but I've yet to have a plant in my possession for that long of time so that the spag moss breaks down and I have to replace it. Um, that usually typically doesn't happen. And when something happens to my plants, you guys, which again, usually typically doesn't happen, 
Um, I have to take that sphagnum moss, and I actually use my dirty sphagnum moss. I stick it back inside of the dirty sphagnum moss container. Now, I do leave the lid open so it does get a chance to completely, we're talking crispy dry out um, in the sun, which is right here in the front. If you guys know the setup, then you know that the door is right in front of me. But all in all, you guys, again, it's like propagating your plants in sphagnum moss. A lot of you guys, as I said, do grow or do propagate in sphagnum moss. Um, and then once it's time for you to take it out the spectrum off, some of you guys get a little scared because it's maybe a sentimental plant or a very, very expensive plant or a very hard to find plant, one of those situations, and you don't want to take it out of moss. Now, the thing that you will have to do with growing in the moss, now keep in mind that moss has no added nutrients, it's just moss, okay? You have to add everything in there that, that plants need. So with me and my dirty spag mix, it became dirty spag once I realized that there's nothing in there for them to eat. Then I started adding soil, um, a little perlite, and then a little of well, vermiculite came years later, but mulch and things came a couple years later as well. But I started to get a hold of the the mixture that works for me and that my plants love. Um, but you have to put in all the extra additive nutrients. I use Miracle Grow fertilizer to actually fertilize my plants and then to actually feed the plants and what's not in the, the soil. Um, I guess that is, a, is that it has soil in it, so it's technically not a soilless mix. But I also use liquid dirt as well. Um, I try to use liquid dirt maybe once a month or bi-monthly simply because the liquid dirt and the my miracle growth fertilizer do not like each other. All right, so I cannot put them in at once. So what I will normally do is water um, with fertilizer for a while, whatever a while feels like for me. And then honestly, then I'll get some liquid dirt and put it in it, of this month and no, not this month, January of this year. And I think a month or so ago, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, because I'm only doing regular watering, and then, yeah, sometime last month I use liquid dirt, but you definitely have to feed that plant and that soil or substrate or whatever you're using in there. And then also, if you just want to use regular spag, that's fine. If you would like to make your own ingredients or your own dirty spag, that's fine as well. If you have another mixture of dirty spag that you're out here using, <laughs> Let me know down in the comment section below because I would really like to know. I'm definitely down to trying out new dirty spag mixtures. Again, there's nothing on soil. I just don't like soil. But to be honest with you, there's about 30 to 40 plants in here that has soil. And I think there's maybe four to five of mine inside the house that's definitely in soil as well. But yeah, there's nothing wrong with soil. I just prefer not to simply because I am a heavy waterer. And since I am in a growth space now, I technically can not overwater my plant. There's enough air circulation and things out here, heat that can keep everything moist and the spag the moss here fairly moist and not wet. Now inside my plants, inside my plants, ha! The pots that I use for most of my plants that are hanging are clear pots or clear containers. Um, as you can see, there are a lot of rootage going around. I did do a video if you guys want to go and check it out. Um, new growth and roots with these here pots. Now, if you are using no drainage, you can overwater your plant. Now, if your plant is in a very warm, hot, humid environment, that water won't hurt that plant as much. But if you're just in a regular home environment, you guys do not use a drainless pot with your um, plant and sphagnum moss or any mixture for that case. Um, especially if you're a heavy waterer and if you cannot see what's going on at the bottom or just cannot see period or just don't know the measurements of your hand how much you pour <clears throat> get a drainage for your plants or keep it in a drainage vessel um, at least that way when you are over watering your plant and watering your plant it can drain and then another thing you guys lastly do not let the spectrum also dry out sometimes you can't help it I've done it a few times but I can tell you and promise you this it took maybe almost a whole entire day, maybe two days to go and completely water these air plants. Now, what I ended up doing was moistening the top, giving it, you know, a good few couple 10 seconds per pot, which I knew for a fact wasn't enough. Kind of how we were doing this here Peru, we was watering it, but I was kind of scared that I was gonna overwater it, but I was 
not watering it enough. It was just kind of staying above the surface. Also, same with this here, Phyllis and Squammy. Enough to keep her stable, but was not watering her enough. So, especially down inside, like there's a layer, maybe two, three inches thick of sphagnum moss inside of the top layer of this here Squammy. I dug out and just layered it with sphagnum moss. I probably should have did it with that Peru as well. But all in all, you guys, make, if you stay on top of watering, everything should be fine. Also, stay on top of feeding her or feeding them because they definitely will tell you when they are hungry. It's funny because when you're with soil, soil holds the amendments and things, you know, to constantly feed the plant when it's needed. But with sphagnum moss, it doesn't take it doesn't take long at all you guys before someone in here lets me know that something is going wrong now that usually happens when everything is growing literally growing perfectly no hiccups no nothing lighting is right temperature is right air circulation is right and before i know it you know it's time to do a, a fertilizing but i've learned having this here space in this many of plants that every time i water i usually put some type of fertilizer in there but if i've just done a heavy fertilizing then i will usually like i have now that's sitting here my watering jug is just regular purified water purified is a strong word i just boiled it <laughs> boiled it and i cool it down and i use it you know to water the plants i actually watered these here yesterday and then now today we are aiming more on my soil plants which are down here my calatheas go purchase what they're calling them now agalimas things of that sort. yes guys at least 90 odd something number <laughs> of my plants here are grown in sphagnum moss we're talking from anthuriums to philodendrons you technically can grow any plant in sphagnum moss cactus can grow in sphagnum moss cactus can grow in water it is crazy a lot of my plants and abscesses i can grow calatheas but they're not in there now i said philodendrons any other genus genre you can think of I have here have tried or is growing in dirty some type of dirty spag as well. I even grown begonias as well in dirty spag, you guys. So um, it just depends on the plant. Can that plant support your watering habits? If you get what I'm saying. So right now we're on a regimen. If you don't know, it's supposed to be every other day with watering, especially this time of year. Right now it's 80. Four degrees in here 48 percent humidity which is not okay it's still hot in here it feels better outside I don't get it you know but they love it so if you want to try growing your plants in sphagnum moss again this will be more for the the hawk eye parent or the helicopter parent or the heavy waterer as well simply because again sphagnum moss dries out pretty well and then your environment i'm pretty sure is not as heavily humid so it would definitely dry out especially with air circulation as well all in all if you want to try it definitely give it a try if you have tried it let me know down in the comment section below again i don't think i will be intentionally buying soil just for plant i mean i have and i did you know for my you can't see my ethereums i did that was just for ethereums but i also can grow ethereums in sphagnum moss which is no problem but i wanted to switch it out of spec anyway you guys um that is it here for today's video please do me a favor hit that like button let me know in the comment section below have you tried growing in sphagnum moss before Again, a lot of people dread sphagnum moss simply because you have to keep up with the watering. It's more than likely, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know. Maybe because I'm so used to the fact of watering my plants kind of often, it doesn't bother me. I don't know. Let me know in the comment section below. Um, everything that I do use, including this here sphagnum moss, be down in the description box below. Now, this don't come with a discount code, but some of the stuff do. They can save you some check. Oh, save you some checkout in the coin as well. Hmm. Save you some coin and check out as well. Go and check those out. Um, and I think that is it. Yep. We got the fed. The, yep. You feed them. Your ingredient. Yep. And then whatever you put it in the drain. Yep. We covered everything. We surely did. I was just making sure the planks are not technically needed. Do I have anything in sphagnum moss? Yes. Without planks. Um, technically, yes. All of my Hoyas. Every look. Except for one. Except for one. Except for one. All of my Hoyas are grown in sphagnum moss. If you're wondering. Again, a lot of my collection is grown. If I can grow water in sphagnum moss, it would be in sphagnum moss. You see what I'm saying? But again, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe, you guys. And I will see you on the next one. Bye.